Welcome back everyone. Mike McConville here, Stratford, Ontario, Canada for String Tech Workstations. Uh, we have something different today that we're going to take care of. I'm going to show you how I do a fret dress and you're going to see why I'm doing this fret dress on this uh, Ibanez guitar that came in the other day. For my regular channel subscribers, you know that I'm big on finding low-tech solutions to high-tech problems. I'm simulating the string load of this guitar. You can see I've got this piece of hockey puck here. I covered the first fret because that's the one fret that you don't want to touch. This is essentially a brand new guitar. Here I have another piece of hockey puck. So what that's doing is it's raising the strings up off the fingerboard and that allows me to slip a single cut six inch vial under the strings and hit all those high spots. But if you look closely at where this string is wound around the post, I just make sure that we get the same amount of string tension. We're going to check this with a straight edge in a second. And this is a very simple way to get that lay of the neck to behave. Get these last three strings. I'm just watching that string right at the post. As soon as that straightens out, then I know that I have basically simulated the string tension and put it back where it was. Let's go take a look at the neck now. So that three thou feeler gauge will not slip under that straight edge. So that tells us the neck, at least this portion of the neck, is very straight. I'm going to try this again on the treble side and we cannot get that under there. So we've essentially determined that from here to here that neck is about as straight as you can possibly get it. So now we're moving this straight edge up right to the last fret. Take a read on the treble side first. So here's our three thou. Will it go under? Well it's starting to go under right here and look at this all the way across right up to here that's where it stops let's try the bass side it starts right here and it goes all the way up so I can fit that feeler gauge all the way up so essentially what that tells you and you've heard me say this hundreds of times that neck to body junction right here those last four frets need to be dressed so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this step by step and I'll do the same straight edge and feeler gauge test once I've leveled that top end here. I know that the problem is here. So we're going to loosen those strings off, pull them out of the way, and we're going to concentrate fully on this with my regular file. Okay, we'll pull our hockey puck out. We took this one out already. So we'll get these strings out of the way. Give us clear access to the whole fingerboard. One more little trick. So these strings are actually fairly, they're still fairly tight, so I just double over that masking tape. I'm going to loosen that off just a little bit more, and then just feed it underneath the strings like so, fold it over, and pull it back. I'll do the same on the other side. Fold that over, and then just slip it under the strings like so. Give it a tug, pull it out of the way, now we're ready to go. Okay, I am back to my regular file that's mounted on a jointed hardwood block, same type of file, six inch single cut, and we're going to really concentrate on these high spots. So we'll check this again with the straight edge in a couple of seconds and uh, see, how, see how close we get. Here's our three thou again. That's it. Done. Let's move to the center. And the treble side. So now that we've got that leveled, we're on to recrowning. I will mask off this inlay. Because this is actually plastic inlay, it's more susceptible to being scratched. So it means the whole fingerboard needs to be masked off before I go to the next stage.
Okay, we're going to chase those crowns back to center. Now because I'm over the body, I'm starting it in the center of the fingerboard, center of the fret, and working towards that outside edge. I'll come around the other side and work back this way to get the other side of the fret. So again, you don't, you don't actually finish the job with the uh, crowning file, you just start it and get rid of all that squareness and then the next stage you'll scrub the, uh, the crowns back to perfect center. We didn't need to take as much off on the treble side, it was more really the base side and actually that fret there looks like it needs a little bit more help. So I'm going to work that one a little bit further. Most of the meat came off in these last th three frets on the base side of the fingerboard. Start up at this top end and get the file marks out first. This is 400 right now. So this is the reading we're getting right now. Six string, low E string is eight cents flat. What I, what I mean by that is when I fret the 12th fret note and tune it with the tuner and I play the open sixth string, it's eight cents flat in comparison to the fretted 12th fret octave. Same deal all the way across. Seven cents flat, four cents flat for the D, eight cents flat for the G, and then five and five for the high E and the B string. A lot of people are surprised when they find out you can cut brass with a wood blade on a bandsaw. Do it all the time. So I'm just cutting out the blank for that uh, compensated Ibanez locking nut.
We'll check how the tremolo bar returns back to center first. Fret a 12 fret note and open string. So we'll do one last check on the bar. Well, Jason suggested I find some new chords, so... <laughs> How about, uh, I don't know, key of F? Okay, so I've looped that, or something similar and uh, I'll just blow over that for a second. so we'll pick uh, D major uh, this time through so I'm playing one seven three six two five one and the reason I do that is that one chord progression takes in all the diatonic chords of any given key so okay so here's the same progression in D major <laughs> That. 
so this is sort of a groove that uh, my buddy came up with at practice there, last couple of practices, kind of a, kind of a deharmonic minor thing. <laughs> felt that the, those close intervals, like a ninth, really tell the story as far as intonation goes. So I'll just start with, I'm playing a tenth on the bottom, and then I'm reaching for that second. The distance between this note and this note is a second or a ninth. And this customer really has a handle on harmonic mechanisms. He's really going to dig the fact that this thing is perfectly in tune and... and uh, I've looped this progression here. And I'll play a series of tenths in a different position on the neck, different strings, in harmony with this. So you really get a sense of the layers of accurate intonation.